About a year ago now, I found this video from Matt Diavella. Social media played some part in the fact that we are lonely? It's just a complex question and with a complex answer. So the glib answer is to go, yeah, social media did this to us. It's just too simplistic. To understand this, I went to the first ever internet rehab center in the world. It's, in, it's just outside Spokane in Washington State. It's called Restart Washington. I remember I arrived there. It's a clearing in the woods. Uh, I get out. I got out of the car. And absolutely instinctively, I looked at my phone to check my email and felt really pissed off. I couldn't see it in the reception. I was like, oh, wait, you came to the right place, right? As a student journalist, this seemed really interesting to me. It's crazy at watching this back because like, I'm just like, I remember thinking this would be so cool to cover on my IGTV show, This News, which is all focused on my generation and like youth culture and youth stories and youth activism and all of that. And I think that social media, loneliness, gaming culture is all a part of young people and young culture. And so I started to figure out how could I cover this story? So I sent an email, had a call, and set everything up only for my plans to fall apart because I had a few complications and this story was nearly 3,000 miles so, away. a plane is like going over me right now. I live in New York and this story was in Seattle. I had the complications that arose. I didn't really reach out and let them know in advance and kind of like the day before was just like, I'm not coming <laughs> when they reached out. We hadn't really been communicating as much before this, so I didn't think that they thought I would make it, but obviously when they checked in, I was like, I can't. I just think they were very upset about that. And um, I knew that the next time I said I would come, if I didn't come, that would be it. This story would be off. When I felt it was time had passed enough to sort of try again, um, I did. So I reached out again, got a yes, and left school early one Friday morning for a weekend adventure. And this is the story of Where? how it went. Yeah. Trying to leave your dorm with a suitcase and tripod at 3 a.m. is a little more complicated than it looks, especially when you're nervously refreshing the JetBlue app because you're not sure your flight will even take off because, well, it looks like this out. With the hour drive complete, we're at the Syracuse airport and we've got to go through security. And that includes you too. this morning if you could just do us a favor and just remain seated um, we do have some Dallas commuters that um, are actually due out in about 30 minutes those Dallas commuters need to get up and get out they've got to go all the way to the other side of the uh, airport not going to Dallas but same thankfully I was able to get up but we couldn't get out because the door literally wouldn't open until it did Okay, I just got off my flight, and literally look, my flight from to Seattle is on time. C-18. Let's go. It leaves in, like, no time. 20 minutes until the doors close for my flight across the terminal, but your boy was hungry. Can I order here, or can I do an egg and cheese panini? Yeah, just one. Thank you so much. Look at this. I won. I won the airport today. So the egg and cheese panini and the mocha wrap thingy. And now we're gonna run to the gate. Literally run, because at this point I was obviously pushing it. So I ran here. We're nothing. Literally, we're not even. I think they're just starting to board and it's... The doors are supposed to be closed right now. Okay, I love my JetBlue, but sometimes this is how we do things. Because we're New Yorkers and we show up last minute. Uh, it's just a New York thing. Six hours flew by and suddenly I could see the beautiful Pacific Northwest. You're my weakness. <laughs> you 
guys. <laughs> I can't even. Okay, I somehow was able to rent a car. <laughs> I have to run to the hotel right now. It's 11.30, time is going by so fast. I have to be there at one at the place and the hotel's like 30 minutes away. So I'm literally getting out my USB to get the um, instructions. Let's go. If instructions instead of directions is any indication, <laughs> I don't drive much. So this was a total joyride. Running short on time, I ditched the hotel and headed straight for the story. Clap, clap. As quickly as I got into Seattle, I left it. Oh my God, there's a sunroof in here. I didn't even notice that. Um, we are going to Bellevue, we're here now. And there's just one problem. The truth is the lady never told me the address and I don't know where I am. Where, look at all these trees, oh my God. Where am I? Please, someone help. I don't know, I need to get there in 30 minutes. Oh my God. I called Restart and This is the real. This is the real. As soon as I started to get the runaround, my inner Alex Levy came out. I've made it all this way. Thank you for calling the Restart Center. You've reached the answering service. How may I help you? Hi, my name's Malik, and I'm actually on um, media interviewing uh, Hillary today. And I just want to make sure I have the right address. I think I'm here, but I also don't think I'm here. Um, is it two minute okay, one? So great question. Mm -hmm. Great question. I'd be happy to help here. And you said that was um, Malik. How do you spell that for you? M A L I C K. And what is your phone number? Please spell you to make sure that's the right place to interview Hillary at 1 p.m. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be at restart. It's not like offsite or anything. She said there was like a waiting area. He literally refused to give me the address. So I drove 30 minutes to try one more address on their website. And right before I made Turns it there, out I was at the right place all along. She just called. I just went to pee right there. Can you believe I peed in the grass? Okay, we gotta run to the back to where we were. Okay, bye. Can I say hi to my vlog? Hi guys. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> okay, we're almost there, six minutes. We made it. I am about to do my makeup. I just changed. Oh man, I need lotion. Oh God. This is insane, Jelly. My talent crew. Where is my talent crew? No one ever wants to come to stories with me. Oh my God. I was right here all along. Oh my God. It's gonna be okay. I really need a therapy session over this. All right, we're getting ready to go in. This is a horrible view, but I'm just like getting my stuff together and tripod. Walking in, I was introduced to Ethan and Thomas. They're both being treated at Restart. Of course I'm like freaking out because I can't do this over. <laughs> Could you guys just share your like the beginning of when you started to notice that you were gaming a lot and that it was a problem? I remember Dr. Hillary Cash, the amazing woman who runs this center, saying to me that you've got to ask yourself what are these young men getting out of these games? Because they're getting something, right? And I got to interview Dr. Hillary Cash herself. To see these interviews, head to my Instagram to watch the show. Driving and I sit on the phone with a friend, like, I went to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. We will die again. If you're aware of the World Health Organization of finally big recognizing the yeah. whole thing, what do you what do you think of that? And, and yeah, what, I guess, what was, the, what was your first thought when that finally happened? Hey everyone, I'm Malik Mercier. I really needed to shoot stand-ups outside, but since I ran over time, gaming and internet addiction rehab treatment And center. obviously couldn't get my words together. Hey everyone, I'm Malik Mercier outside of Seattle Restart, just out of, C just west of Seattle. Where are we? I'm gonna have to come back here tomorrow to shoot a lot of this stuff that I need to shoot for just me, for the intro of the show, because I have to run to interview one more person right now. Okay, so we are now going to take this dot org. All right, we made it to the Take This organization house. I don't want to really show exactly where she lives. I am exhausted. I'm so tired. They better feed me. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Finally done for the night, I started to drive to the hotel, and once I got close- Guys, it's the Space Needle. Oh my God. At the hotel, 
plan is to unpack everything and check in, leave the car here, and then go and find somewhere to park it. I won't lie to you. Finding parking and food at this late hour was a nightmare, but I finally did, and I still dream of the ramen we're both looking at. Good morning, my name is Tony Up. <laughs> it's day two. I have to wear the exact same outfit in order to redo some of the story. Uh, good morning. I am headed to pick up the car to go to back to the shoot location today because I need to. Oh, cars coming out of here. That's cool. Um, as I say, pick up the car. Right. That's good timing. I love this. Look at that. Community begins here. I'm looking at all the Seattle things. Essentially, I need to go back to the shoot location because the way I wanted to produce this was that it would be in a very like in order, right? Like I would go to Seattle Restart, then I'd be like, wait a second, let's get gaming developer thoughts. Because I ran out of time at Restart, the gaming developer I was set to interview over FaceTime yesterday let me reschedule to this afternoon, and I needed to do it outside of Restart so it would all make sense in the show. All right, it says we're pulling up on it, and here it is, wow. We're gonna do four hours. It does this little code thing. You type in the code you see, 238, 238. And then it should let me in. All right. I just got like heckled by a homeless person and I felt so bad. I just don't know if they're like, like nice here. I didn't want to open the door. I was scared and he just like really wanted money or something. I just felt so bad and like, we're gonna, I'm just getting out of here. I so much traffic and like it's saying we're gonna get there three minutes before I said I would call this guy. We're just sitting here. That's fine. The destination is on your left. Arrived. Here. I'm gonna set up the other camera now so that we can have a two camera view for the FaceTime interview. Jonathan! <laughs> so, so as you know, I went to Seattle Restart. And then it was time to film the final stand-ups. Three, two, one. All right, so... All right, so now we've heard it from the horse's mouth, essentially. Far off that games are being made to make you more addicted. Or at least hooked to them in some... Fa some fashion. Some fashion far off that games are being made to make you addicted to them or at least more and more hooked to them because they're supposed to be interesting. Oh, I feel like that gives them. Yeah, I feel like this is way too long. And doing just that. Let's head over there. Where's the key? Found it. I drove back to downtown Seattle, turned in the car, and met up with a mentor of mine. Don! <laughs> um, super amazing, like, former news reporter, still like smart, <laughs> still like as smart as news reporters, and as cool, um, and mentors me, and just so great, and um, he's in Seattle, so that's crazy that I got to meet him while, while I'm here, so thank you so much. Enjoy the Pacific Northwest. You too. <laughs> now I'm going to Salt and Straw. I'm showing this pretty late. I should have shown it when I first got it. But I'm going to the hotel, trying to figure out how. I want to take the bus, but like, how do you pay for it? Maybe I can get on one of these things? 
I wound up walking, which led me to Amazon. I've like always wanted to go into one of them. I think they're closed, but bye. If you've never heard of it, I'm sure you have. You essentially go in, you scan your phone, you leave with the product. You never go to a cash register. Very cool. All the Seattle things. You just walk and you run into more Amazon offices. Like you just literally, like they're corporate offices. I guess this is Roxanne. Well, she's fire. Excuse me. On my last day in Seattle, I went out to Cary Park for what was supposed to be a really beautiful view, but got this instead. <laughs> It's really cool that it's starting to clear up, but I have to go in like one minute because my flight's at 11.45 and I need to go back to the hotel to check out. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to come here and see what it would be like, the view from here, but... I have very limited time to pack, like 20 minutes, less than that, so let's do this. Even so, everything worked out, and this was the final feat. I was actually really late for my flight. Like this time, I'm actually really pushing it. Um, I have like an hour before the doors close, so less than an hour. <laughs> so we'll see if I make it. It's moving, well now it's moving fast. And the insane mess of a TSA line wasn't helping. I wound up being so late that they paged me over the airport speaker, but I made it. <laughs> and I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to tell this story. It would mean the world to me if you went and checked it out over on my IGTV channel. Thank you. Later.